I'm just going to address this right off the bat. Yes, I've got a massive cold sore on the side of my mouth, but hey, it's quarantine. I've also got roots that can be seen from space. I've put on about 200 pounds and I'm not wearing any underwear. Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. If you haven't seen my ugly mutt before, hi, I'm Alice, nice to meet you. I am the founder of onthementalmen.com, which if you don't know is a very small, independent mental health organisation uh, based in the UK, which focuses on mental wellness. We talk about things like depression, anxiety, OCD, PTSD, sexual abuse, and of course, asexuality, which if you can't tell by the title of this video is what we're going to be talking about today. So on my phone I have made a list of common myths and misconceptions regarding asexuality that really needs to be addressed. There's a lot of misunderstanding surrounding asexuality as it is, whether it's a valid sexuality in its own right, where we belong, whether we belong in the normal community or whether we belong in the LGBTQIA community. But there's a lot of things that are said and are tossed around these days uh, towards asexuals which, even if they're not meant in a manner that's hurtful or offensive, they definitely come across that way. I've always said I don't mind if you're curious and you want to know more about my sexuality, please ask me questions if you're genuinely interested, but what I don't like and what I won't stand for is blatant ignorance. It's people making fun of who I am and belittling it because they think that I'm just being extra. So the first myth or misconception that I wanted to address is the idea that all asexuals are frigid. Look, straight up, asexuality is a spectrum, like any other sexuality. Yes, there are some people who identify as sex repulsed, meaning that they won't engage in any form of sexual activity, even down to something as simple as kitting. This is perfectly valid. However, there are countless types of other asexuals who are perfectly happy and perfectly comfortable and actually quite enthusiastic about engaging in certain forms of physical intimacy. Me, personally, I love a good kiss. I love a good cuddle. I'm like a cuddle monster. I've often been described as a little bit too needy, quite a lot too needy. But this is something that my partner really likes now. It's something that I've managed to control over the years. I think the reason I used to be so needy is because I never thought a relationship, a real loving relationship, is something I would ever have, so when I found it I grabbed onto it with everything I had and I wouldn't let go, but I've calmed down a lot and um, now that I'm obviously with my fiance, now that I'm with Stu, he absolutely loves being able to comfort me with just a kiss or a cuddle, it makes him feel good and it makes him feel special in, him, in himself in his own right that he can do that for me, he can make me feel so safe just by a touch. But clearly to me this sort of physical intimacy is down to emotional connection and emotional satisfaction rather than a sexual satisfaction. I still don't feel anything in terms of sexual pleasure. And if an asexual identifies as sex repulsed and they don't want to engage in any form of sexual activity, it's not that they are frigid. They're probably very upset by this, more so than any prospective partner who might have to come to terms with the fact that they can't have sex with each other. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if you're in that position where you are an allosexual and you are involved with an asexual who has said to you, I can't have sex. I wouldn't be surprised if your asexual partner was more upset about this than you are. Because it's not about being frigid. I used to identify as sex repulsed before I found a loving relationship uh, with my ex and then with Stu. Before I found this, I I used to force myself to engage in a lot of sexual activity that I wasn't comfortable with, with people that I may, I may have liked, but I wasn't comfortable going any further with that because my sexuality just wasn't letting me feel anything and it was really upsetting because the first guy I was ever involved with, I really liked him. Uh, so much so that I thought I was completely in love with him. I wasn't. I wasn't by any means, but I thought I was and I, I didn't understand why my body and my mind just wasn't letting me feel any sort of sexual pleasure. There was just this boundary here and I was really, really upset by this because it's like if you just found out that you're lactose intolerant and chocolate is this amazing thing that everyone adores 
and people rave about it and say, oh, it's so good, it's so tasty, you've got to try it. And you're really excited too. And then you found out that you're, you're lactose intolerant and you can't. Or if you, if you did, if you did go there and you did taste the chocolate, your body would just go, nope, 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 this isn't for you. It's really unfair because sex is such a big thing in today's society like it's so raved about it's so talked about and, it, and it's it's embraced and it's a positive thing which it should be you know everyone should be able to feel sexy and confident and in touch with their own sexuality and that's fine but for asexuals it's like nah you can't you can't enjoy that sorry and it's not about being frigid believe me i wish that i could feel something i just wi i want an orgasm i'm just gonna put that out there that would be lovely to feel what everyone else feels at that point in time but i just i can't i can't my body just goes nope nope not today satan not for you nada by nine and that's okay i've come to terms with that in the same way that a lactose intolerant person comes to terms with the fact that they can't eat ice cream or they can't eat chocolate Fine. Am I happy about it? No. Would I have chosen it? No. But I've got to embrace it because there are plenty of other tasty treats out there for me to enjoy. The next myth or misconception that I wanted to address is this idea that asexuals are just bitter virgins who can't get laid. Okay. I am fully aware that I am no six foot five leggy booby blonde supermodel but out of the seven billion people on the planet i have managed to find a few people who find me quite attractive believe it or not i know shock horror it doesn't matter what size you are what shape you are what face shape you have what personality you exude it doesn't matter there's somebody out there who is for you who finds you attractive who gets butterflies in their stomachs when they see you when they talk to you it's not about not being able to get laid. It's about not being able to find someone who accepts the fact that a relationship is so much more than just sex. Sure, for some people sex is a big part of a relationship and that's fine and that's understandable. My partner I don't think could live without some sort of sexual release and that's fine. But it's not the only aspect of a relationship that counts. So you shouldn't shut down the prospect of a relationship before it's even happened just because you hear someone is asexual. That's not fair. Although I will fully admit that me and Stu did match on Tinder about a year before we got together, uh, but before we even had a conversation, <laughs> I unmatched him immediately because he sent me some crude pickup line. And I just thought, nah, nah, this dude ain't for me. <laughs> and look where we are about four years later. The third common myth or misconception that I want to address is the idea that all asexuals experience some sort of sexual trauma in their past which leads them to identify as asexual. Maybe I'm not the best person to argue against this point because obviously my previous video was me talking about my experience with sexual abuse. Yeah, I experienced sexual trauma as a kid but I did highlight in that video that that is not the reason that I identify as asexual today. I considered the repercussions on my personality, on my spirit, on the, the reason that I have these sort of blockages when it comes to relationships and emotion and sex. And I did wonder whether my trauma in the past contributed to the reason that I identify as asexual. And I think slightly. But it's definitely, definitely, definitely not the cause. And I say this because obviously I have found a loving, accepting relationship and I couldn't be happier and my trauma is now in the past. It's, it's, it's staying there and it's always going to be a part of me but it, it doesn't control me anymore. And yet I still don't feel any sort of sexual pleasure or any sort of sexual attraction or desire. So clearly it's not the reason for my sexuality. It's just a coincidence that I identify as asexual and I have experienced sexual trauma in the past. The fourth myth or misconception that I wanted to address is the idea that asexuals don't experience any sort of discrimination or hate or oppression. Oh boy. I don't want to sit here and attack anyone but that is absolutely categorically not true. We have come a long way these days in terms of homophobia. I don't really think 
it exists in common culture today. Obviously there are some people out there who are still very homophobic and are still very hateful towards anything that isn't considered the norm. The gender fluid community get a lot of stigma and misconception and hatred thrown their way. But that is recognised and we do a lot of work within the LGBTQIA community to sort of combat that. We don't for asexuals and this is really isolating. I went to my first Pride in 2017. I had just gotten together with Stu about two or three months before. We went with a couple of friends and it was amazing. It was so much fun. The weather was outstanding. The music and the drag queens and the acceptance and the, the pride was just, it was a magical atmosphere. But one thing I did notice is that I only saw one other asexual flag the entire day and there were thousands of people there and it really made me sit back and go oh my god I forgot that people don't really know about it. I forgot that two years before this I didn't know about it. It, it was mad, it was, it was truly truly mad and over the years I've gone back each time and the second year that I went back I had my own stall there so I wasn't getting to walk around as much but I still managed to see maybe three or four more asexual flags and then last year I went back and did the same thing, but I didn't have a stall this time, so I managed to walk around and I probably saw about 10 or 15 asexual flags walking around the entire day. And I was there for about six or maybe seven hours. So obviously this is a hell of a lot of progress and there are more and more people being open about their asexuality or at least understanding that that's what they are. Even if they can't be out and proud in everyday life, they can at Pride and they can, they can go and just embrace who they are for one day and that's fantastic. But I know I feel a little bit out of place there in the same way that I feel out of place outside of that community. Asexuals don't really have a place to belong. Even within the asexual community, which is a really tight-knit group, there are still people who throw oppression towards you and if you don't identify as a hardcore sex-repulsed asexual who will not have sex or engage in any sort of sexual activity, there are still people within our own community who go, you don't count. I'm on a lot of asexual groups on Facebook and yesterday on one of the groups that I'm in, someone put up a comment <laughs> which really how shall I put this? Ruffled my feathers? In fact, I've got to read this comment out, I really do, because it's just so ridiculous. I don't understand how some asexuals say they like sex sometimes, or only with certain people. I want to understand how those that feel this way also feel that they can identify as ace. I don't understand how people who use phrases or words like sometimes it disgusts me or I don't feel sexually attracted to someone until I get to know them really well, but only sometimes or with certain people or just one person. Wouldn't it be just as okay to admit that you used to be ace and now you're not? It's okay to be normal and then to return back to normality. I'm not attacking anyone so I hope no one is low enough to see this as more than a discussion. So of course I put back, if you hope no one is low enough to take this as an attack then maybe you shouldn't have phrased your discussion in a way that is hurtful and offensive to the vast majority of members in this group. I personally think that what she said is no better than the ignorant normal folk that she speaks about who don't need a reason to throw oppression our way and they just do it anyway. We are such a small community at the moment. There really aren't that many people who are aware of asexuality or who are open enough to identify as it. I've stated in many videos before how often I've had things thrown my way that to me now they're just laughable but to me a couple of years ago or to someone who's just coming out or to someone who's just coming to terms with the fact that they are asexual. It's quite offensive to hear things like that's freaky, that's weird, what's wrong with you, you're abnormal, you're making it up, you're a prude, you just need a good hard fuck, that's my personal favourite, or even something like I'm just seeking attention. I'm not gonna lie, if I wanted attention I'm not sure I'd choose a lack of sexuality to get that. If I wanted attention, I'd just go on Love Island. Although, let's face it, this ain't getting on Love Island. I don't exactly fit their criteria. Now, the last myth or misconception that I wanted to address in this video, just quickly, is the idea that 
asexuality is the same as celibacy. Nah, this ain't true. Celibacy is choosing to abstain from sex. And as I've mentioned, plenty of asexuals have sex, or masturbate, or engage in some form of sexual activity. And for the ones that don't, it's not their choice. As I mentioned before, plenty of them probably want to experience it, and experience it in the same way that everyone else does, but their body just goes, this ain't you. Sorry, like it or lump it. If you don't understand it, fine, that's okay. Just don't be a dick about your opinions. Don't throw them in my face, and I won't shove my sexuality in yours, says the person talking about her sexuality on YouTube. But hey, if you don't wanna hear about it, why are you here watching it? What YouTube black hole did you fall down to get here? And then watch another 15 minutes of me rambling on about how I don't like cock. So that's that for this video. There's plenty more myths and misconceptions that I could go on about, but I'm just gonna leave it there for now because if you have to look at my face for too much longer, your screen will probably crack. Let me know what you guys think. If you think I've missed anything out or if you think I've said anything wrong, please do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have a discussion about this. Obviously, this is my truth and I'm trying to be as open and as honest as possible. But as I said at the beginning of this video, asexuality is a broad spectrum and what is true for someone might not be true for someone else. I'm trying to incorporate as many different strands of asexuality as possible, but sometimes I don't always get it right. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it opened your mind a little bit. I hope it gave you a little bit more understanding and awareness towards asexuality. Obviously, we're going through a very difficult time on the planet right now. If you're watching in April 2020, please stay safe, stay inside, stay connected. And if you're watching in, say, 2023, thank God we survived it and we didn't kill each other over our desperation for tin soup, dried pasta and toilet rolls. I think if there's one thing we need to do right now, it's just to spread a whole lot of love. So please do get talking in the comments below. You can follow me at On The Mental Mend on Instagram and Facebook, or you can find my blog and my website and my helplines at www.onthementalmend.com. My DMs are always open. I may not be able to respond to everyone, but I will always try and read every message that I'm sent and respond to as many people as I possibly can. Obviously that's not always possible, but please know that every message that I receive means a lot to me, no matter what it is or what it's about. My aim is just to help people, and if I can help even one person, it's worth it, which is why I'm still here today, because I am still getting messages saying that my videos or my blog has helped people, and that means so much to me, it really, really does. It's so lovely to know that you guys are reaching out and being proud of yourselves and having the courage to do so. It's, it's really, really inspiring. So that's that for this video and uh, thank you very much. See you again. Bye.